Right, let's uh, write a simple code plug uh, as an example on the OpenGD77 CPS. I'm only going to put a couple of channels in here. It'll give you an idea of what we need to do and I'll also show you how to make use of a very neat, very useful feature that comes with the OpenGD77 uh, firmware which will save us a lot of time and trouble in uh, writing code plugs. But first of all, um, I normally start by putting some contacts in because the, the primary use of my transceiver, my 1801, is going to be uh, for DMR. So if I'm going to use it on DMR, I'm going to need some contacts. I'm going to be using some talk loops. So you'll see that uh, as it comes, the OpenGD77 um, uh, CPS has got uh, a couple of talk loops in there. We've got the Para talk loop. We've got uh, talk group 91 and talk group 9. So they're useful, but we want to put a few more in. Of course, this will depend on where you're located. Um, okay, as to uh, which ones you want. But, okay, let's add one. Most of them are going to be group calls because we're going to be going into uh, talk groups rather than making private calls. So let's add a group call. And I'm going to call this one um, simply because it's the UK Brandmeister call channel. It's 2350. So in there, I'm going to put 2350. And the call ID is also 2350. That's all we need to do for that for now. So we've got that one. There it is. Let's add another one. 2351 which is a UK chat channel call ID is the same like that okay so we've got that one in there and we'll add um, let me think uh, 23526 which is um, I'm actually going to give that a name because that's the hubnet uh, talk group in the UK so we'll just put that in properly Net, and we'll put the call ID in for that is 23526. That was a quick take in. 23526. So there we are. So we've got some, so now we've got some contacts uh, in there. Normally you'd have a lot more than this. Uh, you may, if you've got them as a CSV file, you might be able to import some of your um, contacts. But bear in mind, uh, they'll have to be in exactly the same format as it's looking for here. So you'll have a number, a name, a call ID, a type. Uh, you'll have the ring style and the tone and the slot override. Um, so if you're importing from another transceiver, it's unlikely that that will work. So you may find yourself having to start from scratch, unfortunately. So you've got some talk groups in there. Let's uh, do some channels now got one channel there, digital channel. Well, let's put a couple of FM channels in. Just because, uh, you know, we probably want to use our transceiver on uh, FM locally. Let's put the uh, calling channel on the uh, UK uh, FM here. 145500. Um, call on S20. You could call it calling channel. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's an analog channel. We don't need any tones with it. Um, we're going to have uh, 12 and a half KC bandwidth. You can see that's set there. That's all we need. And uh, similarly, we can uh, add another channel. And we'll call that uh, it's 21, 145525. And we'll see TX frequency is a simplex channel. And that's, that's that. So again, Normally, we'd have a whole host of these uh, on uh, VHF and UHF. We'll just do two quickly to uh, set an example as to uh, uh, you know how the system works. Let's now put in our hotspot. So we're going to use DMR. We're going to use our uh, ZUM spot or DV Mega or whatever open spot, whatever we're using, and um, we're going to um, need to put that channel in. So this is going to be a digital channel, so we'll use DMR, and we'll just call it um, Hotspot. Okay, and 
whatever frequency you're using for your hotspot. We need to put that in there. Obviously, it's a simplex hotspot here we're dealing with, so TXRX frequencies are the same. Um, now then, normally, uh, and certainly in my experience, and I've got a number of DMR uh, handhelds, we would need to put in one channel for every talk group we wanted to use. And that's a bit of a pain because we'd be putting it in if we've got 20 talk groups we want to use we'd be putting in 20 sets of of that frequency uh, each one allocated to um, a different talk group now we don't need to do that with open gd77 or open um, 1801 uh, firmware and the cps software it works slightly differently you'll see here we have a talk group list and it's set to talk group list brandmeister i think there's a, there's two um, stored in the cps if we leave it on brandmeister color code is obviously whatever color code your um, hotspot is using mine happens to be set to one anyway so i'll leave it there um, repeater slot um, hotspots are normally two i believe mine is anyway i think most of them are so let's drop that down to two you'll see there it's set to uh, no contact now we need normally we'd have to set each channel to a contact but let's just set this one to um, let's set it to 2350 so it will default there that's fine okay so now we have finished with that channel for our hotspot so we'll close that okay and if we go to uh, the channels listing we've got our two analog FM channels and then we've got our hotspot channel um, and it's going to default to um, talk group 2350 Okay, but if you remember, I'll just go back into it for a second, if I can. There, right. We've got a talk group list. Well, on a lot of software in this position, you see a scan list and things like that, or maybe a receive group list. You don't need those with uh, this firmware, but we've got this talk group list. So let's have a look to see what that's all about. Over here on the left, we've got talk group lists. And see we've got the two we could add more but we've got uh, two possibility there brandmeister and dmr mark let's look at brandmeister what we want to do is the talk groups that we want to use with our hotspot we want to add into the talk group list here so we'll probably use the parrot to test our audio so we'll add that we'll add 2350 2351 and the hubnet channel okay so they are now in that Brandmeister talk group list. Um, so I'll show you how this works and how now using that talk group list, we only need one channel for our hotspot. Let's first uh, save the code plug we've written. It's very important. So um, it's called the DM1801 new and we'll save that okay always save as you go along what again we should do and we need to do uh, with DMR is we need to put our channels into zones so let's rename zone 1 let's rename that uh, FM it's going to be an analog zone okay so in there um, we've got our ES20 in there which is the, our calling channel we land the S21 that's okay and let's have another zone uh, which we'll call DMR okay and we'll add the hotspot frequency now normally we'd have a lot we'd have uh, DMR repeaters we might have DMR simplex channels we'd add them into this zone or, or we could set up separate zones for each repeater that's entirely up to you how you want to organize it but this is just so that we can get uh, a basic working code plug on the transceiver and I can show you how it operates with the firmware so we'll add the hotspot to the DMR zone we'll close that and we'll save again now um, uh, under the same name we've just updated it we'll save that okay so that's saved Right, so the next thing we will do now is upload this uh, 
simple cold plug to our transceiver. So let's just get the uh, programming lead and the rig out and I have it here on the desk so I'll just plug it into the PC. got it switched on plugged in and we're ready now to uh, upload to the transceiver as I've said before when we're programming um, the CPS uh, we don't need to do anything special with the transceiver once we've plugged in the programming lead we just turn it on not to do any button presses or anything like that so up here um, it's, it's just okay that there so that we can move on we'll click on right and here it goes into our DM1801. It's writing the code plug. It takes a takes a moment. And then it's done. Okay. So I'll show you now um, how we can use the talk group list facility and how it's saving us time and trouble in programming. Okay, here we are now with the uh, Baofeng uh, programmed up with its code plug. Let's turn it on. Okay, and uh, we'll see that um, it's defaulted onto the uh, hotspot frequency, and uh, we've got the Parrot Talk Group uh, programmed into it. Let's just have a quick look at the menu system. If we go to zones. We've got DMR zone and FM zone. If you remember, we programmed in some FM channels. We'll stick with the DMR zone because that's what we're looking at at the moment. You'll see now that if we use the left or right keys, we can actually cycle through the various talk groups that we've programmed in to the transceiver. So in other words, we now only need one channel programmed in and we can have all of our talk groups. These are all the talk groups that were in the talk group list that we saw on the CPS. Okay, so we've got that. That's very useful. It means instead of programming multiple channels, now we only need one channel. We can key up on the um, Parrot talk group there. And uh, we'll drop that and see if it will respond to us. And yeah, there it goes. So, okay, so it's coming back. Equally, if we um, go over to Hubnet there, maybe, maybe there's some activity. Yeah. Okay. So you can see we haven't switched channels, we've just switched talk groups by doing this. It's a very useful feature. I'll also show you something else in the menu here. If we click on the menu button, and if we go down to options okay one of the options here that you really would want to set if i can find it is yeah tatx is switched on here what that means is that if that's enabled if that's set to on uh, when you transmit the um your call sign will be transmitted along with your transmission so instead of just your DMR ID coming up, uh, any other transceiver that has talker alias uh, function will pick up your call sign. Okay, now something that the, the 1801 couldn't do before the firmware was updated. And I'll just go back, um, we can go up to zones just to show you that um, if we click that, the uh, the analog channels we programmed in. Now we, there we are. Let's go back to zone, select that, select that, and so the couple of analog channels we programmed in there. There, if we go back to the DMR zone now. Okay, the other thing we can do here is we can switch time slots. So you'll see we were on time slot two there. If we press the asterisk key here, time slot one time slot 2 
time slot one so we can switch time slots very useful if you're dealing with a repeater uh, that has uh, two time slots you can have uh, just one channel you can switch time slots and as we see you can also switch talk groups you can cycle through all of the talk groups in your talk group list so that alone there's many many other functions with this firmware and it's it's well worth i'll put a link in at the bottom of this uh, video uh, where you'll find some more information on the firmware and some of the other things you can do you can also direct empty you can you can key in a talk group that you don't have stored in the uh, the transceiver and there's various other functions scanning is is very easy um, just to demonstrate this if we go to um, that's easier to show if we go to the FM because uh, there's someone on DMR at the moment let's try and get back onto that one FM okay all we have to do if we press the up key and we've only got two channels in there if you can see it's probably it's going a little bit too quick we're scanning between those two channels if we had obviously if we had dozens of channels in there it would scan through just by pressing the up key we don't need a scan list anymore we just need um, to press that key so it simplifies the operation of DMR and simplifies the analog operation okay thank you very much for watching